Look at this enormous Japanese coast. Four kilometers away from here, a $21 billion giant airport is floating in the water. It's so tremendous that you can spot it from the International Space Station. Meet the world's first airport built in the sea, headed by the bridge connecting it to the land, which is the longest of its kind. Apart from its remarkable appearance and popularity, there is one little snag that was overlooked during construction, something that nowadays everyone is worrying about. It's no secret that the airport sinks 10 centimeters into the sea every day. So, a couple of quick questions. Why did Japan take the risk of building an airport in the sea instead of on land? Also, is it even possible to save this marvel from flooding and ultimate disappearance from Japan's map forever? What have the engineers proposed to prevent it from sinking further? This and much more we will find out in today's video. When it comes to technology, it's a huge mistake not to talk about Japan. Because this country is top-notch when it comes to engineering marvels. Whether it's building the world's first high-speed train, the Tokaido Shinkansen, Kanagawa anti-earthquake technology, or metro trains, Japan is always ahead of everybody. Yet, it's not like every arrow of Japan always hits the target, right? Engineering projects also fail, and mistakes are made. Such a mistake happened during the construction of Japan's Kansai International Airport. This airport, located in Japan's region, is very close to Osaka City and Kobe Port, where already three airports were present within a radius of just 50 kilometers. If we consider Japan's increasing population and economic demands, there was a need for another airport here. The issue was that the existing airports were surrounded by a dense population, making expansion impossible. While on the other side, in the Kansai region, the land was being lived on by farmers who refused to give it up for the airport. So, Japan had only one option left. I must admit that building the airport on an artificial island over Osaka Bay was quite a brave move from the country, as a significant part of this island is approximately 60 feet deep. Constructing an airport here meant creating an island first. As a result, the crazy idea of building an airport on the water came alive. The construction of Kansai International Airport started in 1987, with an estimated cost of just $8 billion. Sounds pretty economical, keeping in mind that it's an airport, right? But due to project complications, the cost escalated to as much as $20 billion. But you know what's crazy? If it had been built on land, the cost would have doubled, because acquiring land from farmers would have required hefty compensation. Thus, engineers designed two islands for Kansai Airport, one four kilometers and the other five kilometers long. As we already told you, the sea here is around 60 feet deep. So to fill this depth, they had to excavate 750 million cubic feet of soil from mountains. Japan had previously built several islands, but in this case, the challenge was the muddy bottom of the sea, which made it risky to construct a superstructure. But the Japanese aren't quitters. They decided to give it their 100%. So, Engineers conducted tests and calculations using samples from this muddy bottom of the sea. And after applying their mathematical measures, which I'm sure many of us would fail to do, experts estimated that the airport would sink up to 19 feet. While reviewing those numbers again, it turned out that the airport could sink 25 feet. But you know what they did? To save on construction costs, officials went for a design that allowed only 19 feet of sinking. And this was exactly the mistake they are currently regretting. The first phase of the construction process involved strengthening the ocean floor, drilling 10 million pipes, then inserting and vibrating them into the ocean floor. This vibration caused the loose sand to compact, making the floor significantly firmer. The pipes, once removed, left behind 10 million drilling holes filled with water, creating a special rate of water percolation. On the other side, to build a 24-kilometer-long seawall, 48,000 concrete blocks were used. Stone and gravel were placed in the joint steel chambers of the seawall, and then concrete blocks were placed between these steel chambers. 
The sole purpose of this construction was to protect the airport from storms and the terrifying waves generated by them. After filling the sea wall with soil, the island's height was raised to 65 feet above sea level. After completing the island, construction workers began the construction of the airport and the runways. In 1990, a bridge was also built from Osaka to the airport, costing nearly $1 billion. But there was a huge irony, more like a paradox. You see, the sinking of Kansai International Airport was already planned because of the muddy surface. But engineers and officials had a major misunderstanding that the airport would sink only 19 feet. However, during construction, the island had already sunk about 34 feet. Ironically, the island, initially raised 65 feet above the sea, had already decreased by 34 feet before the airport was even finished. In this dilemma, engineers estimated that in 50 years, the island would stabilize at a height of 13 feet above sea level, and this elevation was deemed sufficient to protect the airport from floods. However, this estimate also turned out to be incorrect, because what they expected in 50 years actually occurred within just 10. By the time the second terminal of the airport was launched, the island had already sunk by 52 feet, well beyond the expected 13. And here we are today. The airport stands at a dangerously low level that continues to decrease day by day. It is now being said that by 2056, the airport will sink by more than 13 feet and will come parallel to sea level. To avoid this situation, every day, efforts are made to raise the airport's elevation, with about $150 million already spent. However, strengthening the civic structure is not enough to save Kansai International Airport. So what else did they try? Hydraulic jacks have been installed in the airport's foundation, which are raised every other year. Every two years, the entire airport's foundation is raised by about half an inch to reduce the risk of sinking, although the danger persists. Japan is well aware that the airport will eventually succumb to the sea. By spending millions of dollars each year, they are trying to save the airport, but they are also buying time. This may allow them to possibly build another airport in Kansai or elsewhere before the current one sinks completely. On the one hand, where the threat of the airport sinking looms large, on the other hand, nature also knocks every year. In 2018, when Osaka was attacked by a typhoon, it was so severe that it raised the sea level for 10 hours, flooding Kansai Airport with water. The runways were submerged, and the planes parked at the airport also suffered significant damage. Due to this incident, all airport operations had to be forcefully halted. But this is a problem for the country. Because in 2025, Osaka will host the World Expo. For almost six months, the airport will be the main gateway for tourists from all over the world to attend the event. To achieve this, $500 million has been spent to completely rethink the airport's operation and change its interior appearance. But the climate could once again play spoil sport. A marvel of engineering, Kansai International Airport remains a fragile jewel in the crown of world aviation. No matter what happens next, you must give credit to the Japanese for their commitment. Not only do they accept their fate, but also take it as a challenge, because they have shown the courage to do what no other nation has been able to do thus far. What is your take on this sinking ship? Will the Japanese be able to save it? Do let us know in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and until the next video, Bye.